Welcome back. The Colorado Avalanche are obvious cup contenders again this year. Even more so, they actually improved this already awesome team. Unbelievable. Lost to Dallas, of course, in the seventh game in overtime uh, and the playoffs there with a slew of injuries to both of their goaltenders, um, to uh, Eric Johnson, one of the best penalty killers, and so on and so forth. But hey, Let's talk about the key arrivals in the offseason here. Starting with Brandon Saad, left winger uh, who came across. He's got one more year left on his deal uh, for $5 million in that trade with Chicago. That uh, saw Zadorov go the other way amongst a couple of other bodies. And Saad's a great two-way player. He's defensively responsible. You can, he can move up and down the lineup. And he could still score 20 goals, at least 20 goals, no matter where you place him. He's got a ton of playoff experience. Um... You'll make probably a perfect fit next to Kadri and Burakovsky on that second line there. But again, you know, if injuries occur, you can move up to that first line just as easily. Uh, the other addition um, in that trade, uh, in, a, in a trade with the Islanders, was Devon Taves, um, who they who like practically stole from the Islanders for two second rounders. Um, they signed him to a four-year deal worth 4.1 million AAV, just Fantastic signing there. Taves is just is just he can eat a lot of minutes. He's easily probably maybe the third best defenseman right now. Um, he's he can add a little bit of offense, probably around twenty five or so, thirty maybe points a season. But he's he's great defensively. He's got a great stick. He's positionally really sound, and he can play with pace. So this has got to be one of the deepest defense. Um, in the league right now, because uh, who, who you got? You got Makar and, and Graves on the first pairing, uh, Gerard and Taves on the second, and then probably Eric Johnson and maybe like Bowen Byram or, or Ian Cole. I mean, that's pretty solid. Uh, in any case, let, let's move on. We'll get uh, back to talking about the, the defense, though. Key departures on this team. Nemstinikov um, was a free agent, and he signed with Detroit. The left winger slash center. Zadorov was in that trade, as I mentioned, with Chicago. Colin Wilson became a UFA. And um, let's talk about the players Sakic re-signed here. Starting with Andre Burakovsky, signed him to a two-year deal with $4.9 million. One might argue that's a little high, seeing as how... He only hit a plateau of 20 goals as a breakout season last season. But he should do really well playing with Kadri again, not to mention Sad, right? On a really good second line. Not to, Don't forget, he was a monster in the playoffs. He had over a point per game, um, I want to say. Where are you, Burakovsky? Yeah, se 17 points in 15 games. Seven of those goals. He was a plus seven. So he's not uh, like a defensive liability Bunny, um, by any sense of the word, either. So um, maybe it's a little high, but it's a good signing. Uh, the other forwards, we're talking about Valerie Ndushkin, um, the right winger they signed to a two-year deal worth 2.5 AAV. Another great deal. Um, I think he came close to breaking his old goal record with 13 last season. He's a really good defensive player who has some more offensive ceiling, and he platooned on that second line um, during the regular season and the playoffs. So uh, look for where they're going to place him. I think he'll end up on the third line and bump out um, Tyson Jost, who I'm going to talk about next. Uh, the center slash left winger was signed, re-signed to a one-year deal worth 874k. Uh, he, looking at his pedigree, of course, he's been a bit, a bit of a disappointment so far. Um, he's probably more effective on the wing because his face-off percentage is god awful. Ah, I. I don't know. I, I think Natushkin probably bump, bumps him off that third line. And I don't even know if he gets to, to, to start in the lineup, even on the fourth line there. Um, because on the third line, I, I probably you probably see Camford, Donskoy, Natushkin. Um, and then on the fourth line, you're probably looking at Calvert, Belmar, and maybe Jost there. But I mean... There's other there's other uh, rookies and stuff knocking on that door. Like there's Martin Kelt, their fifth rank prospect. He's a right winger, six foot two, uh, about 21 years old. Logan O'Connor, uh, 23 year old, 24 right winger, um, has put a lot of time in the AHL. Um, guys like that. Uh, there's Sherwood as well, um, who who they could be looking at as too. And what happens if you know there seems to be a new craze here about playing 
the Tampa Bay started in the playoffs um, playing going with 7D and playing one less forward and rotating one of your you know, top six guys in that extra space on the fourth line. So could that mean you know, Jost gets just bounced from the starting lineup and is just seen as an extra body? I don't know. I would love to hear from you on that. Um, the last re-signing I wanted to mention was Ryan Graves. A uh, defenseman was re-signed for three years at $3.167 million. I thought he might sign for a little bit more. He's the guy who had the best plus minus in the league uh, last year um, with a plus 40. He's a hulkster of a man. I want to say six foot four, six foot five. Matches up, uh, pairs up really well with Makar. Um, and then uh, one of the last columns uh, here I have are rookies who could crack the lineup. I've already talked about a few of them on the forward group, uh, including Kout. Um, but on the defense, yeah, I've mentioned Bowen Byram. Um, I know Connor Timmins, the way he was going. Uh, some insiders were talking about him. Um, Possibly making the team and allowing Colorado to keep Byram in the minors for another season, but Byram plays uh, is a right shot. Timmins is a is a left. Do I have that right? No, Timmins is a right. Bowen is a left. Excuse me, Byram. What's happening? English. So, I, probably the most ideal situation would be Eric Johnson on the right. He's a right shot, and Byram on the left, and Ian Cole is your seventh guy who can play both left and right, and he just switches in and out with one of those players if they go do go with the 6D, um, you know, throughout the season, depending on back-to-backs and so on and so forth. So, I mean, Connor Timmins only played almost close to a full season last season, and the season before that, he, he, was, com- he was completely gone with a concussion. So I know he's getting up there in age, 22, 23, but another year won't really kill him. He, he's a good player. Maybe he just might have to buy his time. And who's not to say he gets sees at least a few cups of coffee and gets a chance at uh, some sort of training camp, although it doesn't look like we're going to see any um, exhibition games at all. The league looks to start on January 13th, if you haven't heard about that already. Um, now... Uh, I got some uh, special categories here I want to review. Best acquisition. I'm going to say Taves, but you could also easily say Sad. But Taves, they just they didn't give up a player, and they re-signed him for four years, and he's th- practically their number three defenseman right off the bat now. Um, Sad is only around for one more year, but still, he plugs that hole in the second line beautifully. Uh, the sleeper here is Tyson Jost. Um... Is this finally going to be his breakout year? How much ice time is he going to get to begin with? Uh, the dark horse um, of all this I see is Natushkin. Um, I don't know if you pronounce it here or not. Or Natushkin. In any case, um, could we see some more offensive, offensive potential with him? And will he start on the third line? Uh, best bang for the buck. Uh, I'm going to go with Taves, but you could also say Graves as well. And don't forget about... Nazem Kadri. I know he wasn't a re-signing. He was a trade from last year, um, but he was injured last year, and he has the he is so has the capability to score close to thirty goals. He's done it for he did it for Toronto twice in back to back scenarios. So um, and he's one of the only grittiest sandpaper guys on the team um, to some extent. Really, I mean nasty Naz. Um, really turns it on in the playoffs too. So, um, so there's that. How do I grade this team? Well, before I give you mine, the one disappointment I have is where's the goaltending depth? Grubauer seems to have a bit of a, a peak he hits in the amount of games he plays until he gets injured. Uh, and Francois, although he had a great regular season last season, he wasn't so good in the playoffs. Um, and then he got injured, and then Hutchinson, their third string goaltender, um, came in and played decently at a 9 10 save percentage clip. He's now with the Toronto Maple Leafs, by the way. But why didn't they go out and get a, a you know, adept goalie like Aaron Dell, who the Leafs signed for like 800K? He had a 9 10 save percentage last year, on, and that was with San Jose with one of the worst defenses out there, defensively speaking, um, what could have he done, you know, on a team like Colorado, right? I mean, yeah, there's Adam Werner right now, um, who played two games of them last year with a 914 save percentage. Um, he's six foot five, uh, 205 pounds, huge! 
um, from Sweden. Uh, he's played five games right now in Europe uh, with an 862 uh, save percentage. Maybe they bring, maybe he sees a few games to see what they have with him. Or maybe Sackett goes out um, at the trade deadline and grabs a goaltender. I don't know. I'd like to hear what you have to think about that. Uh, Colorado Flans, fan, Flans? Fans. I'm going to give them a B plus. Um, you could easily also give them an A minus. So let me know what your grade is. And uh, congratulations. You've made it to the end of the video. Please celebrate by hitting that like, subscribe, and notification bell, which will alert you when my next video comes out, which will probably be uh, my off-season grade of the Vancouver Canucks, uh, which will probably be followed by the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm not going in alphabetical order or anything, so um, I'm really hoping to get through all 31 teams, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. Uh, please, in this crazy world we're living in right now, be kind to each other out there, and I'll see you soon.